it's Tozer. You know, the long and the short of it on Tozer, and we'll read it in just a sec, is do something. You know, don't be content to, you know, kick back and think that. Because you're part of a mega church or a mega ministry or somehow you're involved in the work of the gospel that God doesn't want you personally, one-on-one -on -one with him, to do something particularly, peculiarly stupid in the eyes of the world. <laughs> no, really. I mean, think about it for a minute. You know, it's very easy to be around 10,000 Christians, you know, to go out and say, oh, well, we're going to save the world. So we're at an evangelistic crusade where we know that, you know, it's safe because all those people, you know, come in to hear this concert and we know that there's going to be an altar call. So afterwards, we're going to lead them to the Lord. Okay, that's good. And I'm happy for you. But afterwards, do you take the time one-on-one -on -one to meet with that person afterwards for the next few weeks, months, years? Do you go back and see how they're doing? Do you care that they might need to know that you're still okay with the Lord so that they're still okay with the Lord? Because Jesus didn't make it easy to follow him. He said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But if you read his words, it don't sound so easy and it don't sound so light. I mean, come on now, let's get real. He said some pretty hefty things that, you know, if you're going to follow me, you got to do this. You know, eat my body, drink my blood. You, know. you only follow me for the miracles. You're know. going to follow me when I'm, like, telling you right now it's going to get tough. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be a good cheer of overcome the world. I don't like that kind of message. I just want the goody-goody stuff. What goody-goody stuff? There is no goody-goody stuff. You get to go to heaven. But you might suffer and die in order to get there. It's true. Yes, you in America. Because Jesus doesn't want you to bring all of hell with you. He wants you to take the hell out of your life so that you'll come to heaven with at least a clean slate. Don't get me wrong. He paid for all your sins, but are you dragging along the world with you? Or is the world dragging you from being with him? Because sometimes you might find that he might not take you in a rapture. He might not make for you a way of escape that you should be able to bear it. But he might just say, you need to go there. You need to deal with it. You need to be right with me or you'll get left without me. Because we're looking at my utmost. And sometimes, you know what? God don't mess around when he's talking about the utmost. He wants you to walk with him, talk with him, be with him, or guess what? You might be found without him. Getting into God's stride. Enoch walked with God. Genesis 5, 24. You know, I love the whole story about Enoch. You know, I mean, sorry to get sidetracked, you know, because I just keep picturing this, and I've always treated this the same way every time that I read it about Enoch. I just keep thinking, man, Lord, can't, can't we just, you know, like you and I, spend time together and you know father can't we just like um you know talk and share and you could just say hey come on up and i'll stop by your place and you can stop by mine and i can just visit anytime i want to and it doesn't have to be like in dreaming or in imagination but i could actually just walk away from the world outside of my body and be there with you as you are in heaven which you said one day I'll come home to can't I just come visit you dad isn't there a place that I can just be like Enoch and walk with you is that what you want it's what I've always wanted it's what God wants for you The test of a man's religious life and character is not what he does in the exceptional moments of life, but what he does in the ordinary times when there is nothing tremendously or exciting going on. When the camera's off, what do you do? Truthfully? I play! Uh, no, I don't. I 
sin like you do. <laughs> I fail miserably. I fall flat on my face. I bump my nose. I stumble around. I bumble around, you know. But I ask God, please, God, stop me. Help me. Change me. Make me. Rearrange me. Take whatever it means necessary to take the sin out of my life. That I would no longer be struggling or fumbling or falling down when I should be singing and rejoicing and dancing all around and participating with the fact that you're coming again so soon. What do you do when the camera's off? Because when it comes to God and your sin, the camera's never off. The worth of a man is revealed in his attitude to ordinary things when he is not before the footlights. John 1 36. It is a painful business to get through into the stride of God. It means getting your second wind spiritually. In learning to walk with God, there is always the difficulty of getting into his stride. But when we have gotten into it, the only characteristic that manifests itself is the life of God. The individual man has lost sight of his personal union with God. And the stride and the power of God alone are manifested, so it's no longer the he that lives, but it's obvious that the Lord is living in him. How else could he do what he does all day long, recording videos? How can I be here when I'm hungry, tired, worn out, burned out, bummed out, frustrated, angry, mad, sad, whatever? How can you? Because it's the Lord in you. It's Jesus. And whatever it takes, whether it be making a fool of myself in these videos or writing as I do or sharing intimate moments as I've done in, in uh, pictures that I've used in inspirational dissertation of sharing my heart and my agony and ecstasy with God, then I'll do it. For the sake of someone like you and someone that God loved so much that he died for someone like me, that you might know that Jesus loves you, that God the Father does, that you can make it. It's okay. You will get there. It is said of Jesus, he shall not fail nor be discouraged because he never worked from his own individual standpoint, but always from the standpoint of his father. And we have to learn to do the same. Spiritual truth is learned by atmosphere, not by intellectual reasoning. And that means that when you're around or about the presence of God, and I don't mean God's presence coming in and you get all goo-goo-eyed and, eh, you know, gold dust and smart dust and dumb dust and dusty on it, you know, but rather when you are involved in thinking of the word of God, when you know that you know, when you just go, oh, wow, I didn't trust him, but now I'll trust him, you know, with all my heart that I don't lean on my own understanding. Oh, good, because I can't figure it out. But that in all my ways, all I got to do is acknowledge him. Even in bed, even in the bathroom, even in the store, even driving down the road when I'm mad at that guy who just cut me off. I got to acknowledge him in those. Ooh, boy. God's spirit alters the atmosphere of our way of looking at things and things begin to be possible which never were possible before. In your porno, put God there and you will drop your porno as fast as you realize that God is watching you doing what you're doing while you're watching porno. If you are caught up in sin, then picture God there and you'll find that God cares. Not cares that you are putting a picture of him there. He cares that he wants to pull you out of what you're trapped in. Whether it be a bad marriage or a bad relationship, whether you're sinning now or whether you're saint, saintly now. <coughs> God cares for you so much. He wants you to know his heart is grieved, not condemning you. He's not going to pounce on you and stomp on you. He could do that at any time. You've got lots of sin in your life. But he wants to pull you back with loving kindness, with mercy and grace, so you would know the truth that would set you free, that God is love, and his love will cause you to repent because you want to please him and not yourself. Your selfishness catches you up into sin. 
but your selflessness will catch you up into righteousness. Getting into the stride of God means nothing less than union with himself. It takes a long time to get there, but keep at it. Don't give in because the pain is bad just now. Get on with it. And before long, you will find you have a new vision and a new purpose and a new direction. That you have a new relationship. That when you fail, you don't feel like you're falling far from God. But you feel like you're falling into his arms that he picks you back up and says, keep on. We can do it. We're running a race. It's a marathon. We're almost there. You can make it. You will make it. I'll help you every step of the way. So turn to God in every way and in everything. And you'll find that whether you're caught up into gambling or political agendas or whatever worldliness you want to put there or personal lusts, whether it be the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life, whether you think you're somebody special, or whether you're in ministry and you're caught up in being religious, you know. Wake up. Put God there. Jesus will burst that bubble if you recognize and you let him and you talk to him and you be honest with him and then listen. Listen very, very, very carefully, because then he'll talk to you directly. He'll speak to you emotionally. He'll relate to you on the level of where your sin is at, because he'll stand there in his light, exposing it. And though you will be embarrassed and ashamed, he'll love you through it. You'll be better on the other side than you are on this side.